Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. I think today we'll be looking at uh, chapter five of the book, which is uh, Workflow Pride. And it's going to be taken by Fanny Kuma. So without much ado, I'll just give you the floor uh, to go ahead with your presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And can, you can see my screen, right? Yes. And hopefully I'm audible too. And I'm just trying to open up uh, uh, here. I mean, I'm just doing some a uh, little bit of uh, cleaning. I mean, I'm sorry, I should have done this one later. I'm just rendering this document, whatever I'm working on. Uh, yes, it's in the workflow is here. Okay. And you are, my screen is shared and I'll go back to here. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm just Today, I'm, I'm Fanny Kumar here. I am from uh, Texas, in United States. Here, it's very, so very hot. So if I've been, uh, if I'm drinking some water in between, just excuse me. So because of that, uh, humid and it's so very hot here. Uh, uh, to start with the topic of pipes. Uh, uh, well, you know, like, most of my presentation would be uh, from the previous cohort. Uh, people I will be using their uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations uh, uh, and trying to uh, you know, just charm in whatever I know. Uh, I am uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a learner myself. I'm uh, trying to use uh, R for a couple of projects that I'm working on. So that's my background here. And okay, to start with the pipes, uh, concept of pipes is so really changed the way of uh, the R programming. That's what at least I can say, uh, because when I started learning, uh, well, around year 2000 or a little bit around that time, uh, it was all, uh, uh, the, uh, the pipes was, the deployer was not yet, uh, being created or that package has not been created. So the understanding of the R programming language was so hard. Uh, I mean, at least for, for the people like me, who like who were not uh, the brackets and the square ones and a couple of things, you know, the way the language has been written is so hard. Uh, it, it it was it was kind of a language uh, which did not uh, you know like it's not easy to understand and learn so that was one of the reasons why i i did not pursue one of my i mean personal reasons is now i could not understand it well for my uh, analysis or my research paper so i moved myself to sas where i i was able to write you know uh, uh, pieces of code which is easy to read and uh, understand and, you know, well, others can able to understand, uh, uh, you know, explicitly without actually telling them what I'm, what my uh, intention was to do with it. So the, the point of, uh, you know, what I'm trying to make is that the readability and uh, the other things have been changed with the advent of pipes. And uh, I, I, uh, just I found I stumbled upon a very very good conversation. I know this is not in the book or not any of us. Uh, uh, I mean, like any of where uh, we have in the pipes. But I would highly encourage uh, you know people who are looking at it. I, I, I'm going to have this link uh, in the, my presentations too, where actual history of pipe has been explained in very detail way aware, you know, what, I mean, the different, uh, uh, different origins of pipes, you know, where it started, how it, uh, how it, uh, you know, like uh, the different versions of uh, all those evalu uh, evolution of pipe, how it came from F star, uh, F hash language. Yeah, so I really find this uh, article uh, very interesting and I learned a lot from this place. So it just, uh, whenever you have time, uh, just go through this, and uh, I, I that's really a really nice article, you know, which is not in the book, nor is mentioned in any of those code lists. I, I, I can maybe I don't know. I can I post it here in the uh, in the chat window? 
You can post it on the chat. Yes, I am trying to go back here and uh, see how to do that. I do not know that. Yeah, I mean, once I, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a data camp tutorial pipe tutorial. Yeah, so just, uh, or otherwise I'm going to post it on later on, you know, once I'm done with it. So the first thing is that we are using the pipe operator to make the code more readable. As I said, uh, it is true, very true that pipes have made uh, the code really readable uh, for people who just come through it and, you know, uh, uh, to start programming, uh, uh, learning programming, not start programming, learning the programming far, this pipe has made the life very easier. And, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll be talking about the left-hand side, LHS versus the right-hand side, as I mentioned, and then the recognize when, when not to use the pipe operator and review the other pipes operator. So he, uh, in, in this uh, presentation, will be talking about these two very, uh, uh, very, uh, very, very few, I mean, very meagerly. We, we are not showing, we're not going to talk in detail about this, uh, you know, we, we, uh, review the other pipe operators or where not to, not to use the pipe operator, but we'll be talking about in general about what the pipe operator and all that stuff is. So the pipe operator comes from, uh, I hope uh, I'm spelling it right to the uh, market R package. Uh, and this one, I mean, the video link here is also really good where she explains in detail about the ideology behind using a pipe operator and all that stuff. So it is nice to watch this one. And uh, if any of uh, uh, the, the market are, you know, like I, uh, now that, you know, I, I really do not know, like right now, if you are using Diplier, I don't think so that you need to explicitly call the library, uh, the market R anymore. Uh, if anyone, please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, this library, and we do not need to call explicitly anymore. That's what at least uh, my experience in the last few years. And uh, he, as he said here, for learning humans, read uh, operator, you know, the uh, percentage uh, greater than sign percentage would be the pipe. So for, uh, you know, for the people who are just starting now what, to understand what a pipe is, uh, I, I recall from, an, uh, you know, one of the YouTube videos I was calling, it's just like a pipe, uh, you know, water pipe or some kind of a pipe where the water is flowing from one, uh, the left, uh, the left hand side to the right hand side. This, uh, so it will be a continuity, kind of a continuity of a programming. So that he was trying to uh, get an analogy of the, uh, the programming where uh, the, uh, the uh, where you know, on the left-hand side, you have the data that you're, uh, the data frame or the cable or whatever you is, is working on here is on the left-hand side and you do the data wrangling, you know, you get whatever you want and end of the, end of the whole, whole pie of I a mean, whole, this thing you'll get whatever you want at the end you know all the translations with using the pipe so the pipe is basically a flow of uh, programming structure you know the uh, whatever functions that you want to use from left to right or you know you can do the other way around too but the the pipe symbol does that for you so that's that's a way of understanding the pipe uh, any questions till now Anyone? I mean, I know that I cannot see the chat window. I don't know, like I have to set it up, but I cannot see the chat window or anything. So, but that's uh, starting of how the pipe would, uh, to understand the pipe concept is. So any questions on the concept of pipe? If none, okay. So. We'll be looking into a small example that I started working on here. Uh, here is uh, where, you know, like uh, we, uh, the, we, uh, we can, you know, like uh, the simple thing is that we, uh, we have a data set. 
first uh, for any any for any any analysis uh, you know in general for any analysis we have a data set or data frame or uh, table you call it whatever it is you know a csv file we read that in then and this next step is either you know create or do kind of a subset or do our analysis and then uh, throw it uh, i mean have the output uh, output table or this thing and either you use a uh, plot or some kind of you know model or tidy model or something <coughs> to the next analysis right so within that process you know the step of wrangling can be uh, done in a couple of different ways uh, you can do that either in base base r or you can do it in uh, uh, what is that um, uh, you can do that in tip, uh, uh, using Diplier, also using, um, what was it? I forgot its name. Data like, uh, table. Sorry, sir? Data or table. Oh, yeah, data, data, data table. Yeah, data, data table. Yes. Thank you. Data, data table. You can do multiple, uh, couple of things. You do not really have to stick on to one, but uh, I, uh, most of them, and I can say that most of them have found the Diplier. Uh, is kind of uh, very uh, straightforward, very easy to understand step-by-step -step process where you can, uh, you know, easily learn and do it than the baser or data table. I mean, that's not data table. I think, you know, I'm, I'm missing that part. Yeah, that, that's very, uh, the syntax is the main thing, okay? And for example, okay, let's see, uh, we are using uh, empty cards data. Uh, data, uh, data frame. Uh, so first thing that we are trying to do is we uh, we are trying to find out uh, the carburetor, right? The carburetor, uh, you know, filter out whose carburetor is greater than one. The next thing is that use that data frame and uh, group by cylinder. And then uh, next thing, uh, the next thing that we are doing is here is using that data frame, you know, line by line using that data frame and then uh, do us uh, get a mean of the miles per gallon here. We are using the summarize function, then use this one and get it in another data frame, and then uh, do the finally uh, sort it out uh, using the average data frame. So these are doing one, two, three, and four, four individual steps, creating four different objects and then trying to uh, uh, print it out at the end of it. So this is the basic thing that, you know, uh, that we do for any analysis. This is nothing, anything, uh, this is what it is. So end of the time, end of this thing, you know, like we can actually see intermediate steps to here. How, uh, how would they change by just saying output here and that stuff, right? So we can do something like this to see what, what's going on here. Okay, so so these are the small things that you can see if uh, this is the first step where you have filtered out where the, the carburetor is greater than one, okay? So from here to the final analysis is like doing it all in four different uh, four different steps. So that's that's uh, that's the uh, that, that's the first, way that at least I started with, you know, when I, when I started working on, I used to uh, write down each and every, every uh, in, a, in a different line uh, to see what it is doing. And that's how, uh, you know, the people who would start learning uh, and, you know, would it do, do it serve the purpose? Yes. Uh, it, it would serve the purpose of having uh, all the intermediate data sets, but, uh, you know, because uh, there are so many objects in memory and, you know, you keep on uh, thinking about the namings or, you know, what kind of names you want to give and ABCD is not a proper names where uh, you would remember which one is what and, you know, those kinds of things, you know, once you start having so many data sets or there are many data frames, uh, uh, you, you would start forgetting about uh, what is uh, A at the end of the, you know, when you started working on Z, Z, uh, Z, 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 or, you know, 
those kind of 50 the 50th uh, data frame so that's that's a problem with this kind of working so then you know the problem i mean the, as you said uh, a to a to d are basically placeholders where you know you try to get the intermediate data sets and you may not really need a b and c because with the final data set that we are interested in is only the d we do not really need anything of those a b and c so right so the way uh, the now the help of uh, or we can also do in a, in a, in, a, in a, what you call a traditional way is as he showed here is uh, to an arrange function uh, you know arrange as uh, his see uh, the way that uh, this works would be uh, you know from lowest i mean from the leftmost to read it backwards the way uh, here i would see here is the first thing is he's trying to do is the mean is the final thing that we are trying to do then go back here and then he's grouping by so first he did, first he's filtering it out and then he's trying to group by and then on top of it he's using the summary function for the mean so it's i don't know i mean i'm a little confused already here so what what you know which which way he is going is he going top to top to down but i think uh, he will be always backwards uh, somebody can can you correct me like is that the way it is right the base r is always backward i mean like the internal most uh, thing is worked on with the uh, the last thing it is worked is within the brackets and the, the the then it will go back and will get it done so that's kind of little confusing even after working for a couple of years or you know trying to do it so the next thing what he's talking about is uh something like you know the nested pipes uh so now uh he uh, uh with the advent of pipes the linearity of uh, the pipes has become i mean the readability and uh, the linearity of writing it down has become so easier uh, so see first thing is uh, uh, for the starters, some people who are just starting, maybe if you, uh, some, most of the time, you just don't need uh, to write the declare always uh, using, to use their verbs, but it is a very good habit of writing it down uh, because that would be really helpful uh, in, in, you know, when you're, uh, uh, in some cases, I cannot, I, I really do not know where, you know, I, I cannot think of it right now on the top of my head, you know, where is the filter is again used or somewhere else and all that stuff. But writing this style of code is really, really recommended, at least, you know, for the people who are just starting. So see, the first line is filter, uh, the condition that you want to apply here. And then once this is done, this line is done, it goes to the next line here and a group by, uh, where uh, the way the group by is basically uh, groups it by cylinder. And then once this line is done, it would go down here, then work on the summarize the same data set. I mean, the, the data frame or the table is just basically it is doing the same thing and using the same uh, data, but one after the other first, for, uh, in this sequence, you know, whatever the sequence that we are trying to use it. And finally arranges, uh, uh, you know, sorts it by descending order. So this is in a linear fashion it does. So this would actually um, very helpful to understand what we are doing at the readability. I mean, I keep on saying that uh, readability is uh, the key here because uh, most of the time the declare is little bit slower. That's what I mean. Like I, I did not even uh, I, I personally could not test uh, because all my data sets uh, that I played with are small and they do not have that memory issues and all that stuff. But people say that it is slower than base R or uh, uh, for that uh, matter the. Uh, uh, I keep forgetting that one. Uh, so that is much faster. So they recommend you to use uh, the uh, Diplair if the fast or the fastness is not actually is your criteria. 
So meaning that, you know, the readability and, you know, maintaining and all those things are your main criteria. They would say that better use Diplayer rather than using the base R. So that's, you know, that's a trade-off between what kind of, uh, you know, project you are working on. If it is looking for high crunching, you know, much faster results and all that stuff, uh, the base R functions or using the base R syntax is a little faster than Diplayer because of the linearity function. That's that's what uh, the people's, people say that about that. So here, uh, uh, till here, do you have any questions about what's going on here with the pipes? Uh, okay, I, I see that here. Okay, thank you, okay. Um, let me uh, type it here to the uh, the data camp thing that I was talking about. So that's uh, that's uh, you know that's where the uh, the deploy style of piping is. And uh, has I, I was li uh, listening to John about his uh, uh, the thoughts about overwriting uh, the data frame uh, data frame uh, using the pipes. I kind of agree with him uh, because see uh, here in this example that we uh, he used earlier, uh, if I uh, if if I run this 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 chunk of code, you know this chunk of this thing, you know the whole thing, we have one, two, three, and four. You know, like we can actually uh, see what's going on within each individual, this thing, you know, like uh, what's going on in A, filter, what going, uh, what's going on with B, we can see that and we can see that if it is what's going on with C, uh, you know, where the, the new variable has been created or, you know, the, uh, the average uh, uh, underscore MPG has been created. And then we can finally see in D what's going on with uh, within uh, within that sorting order, you know the the way it has been sorted out. So we can clearly see what's in in a transition. Okay. So, but if we do a piping, what happens is that we cannot individually see any of these A, B, and C and D data set. I mean the data frames. It's just the final data data frame, which is D is the one which is accessible for us to use it to the next iteration. So that's that's a pretty much what he's talking about here, where you know the overwriting the data is easy or right. You know, one method of wrangling data is just to overwrite and reassign the calculation to its original object, but there is a problem. Yes, overwriting an object prevents a clean debugging, and you will be you will have to rerun your code over to see what is changing. And the repetition of the object uh, being transformed implies what does my data look like now? So he, this is what he's talking about. Uh, sorry, I keep on coming to here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, if we want to really see what's happening in the original data versus the last data set, this you know, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'll show you what's going on here. But later on, say for example, let's see this uh, flight object, you know, the flight uh, flights object where it is uh, being given in the actual textbook where he, uh, he has done a little bit of, uh, uh, a little, a little uh, hopefully you can see my screen, right? Any, every, anyone, do you have a problem with that? Anyone? I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just showing you uh, that initially the flight data set uh, would have all these variables and I think I'm audible, right? Anybody can confirm? Yes, yes we can hear audible. you. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I have an habit of checking on who is listening. <laughs> sorry, but I mean, I'm new to this. So, okay, so the flights is something, you know, initially it starts with all this, uh, uh, variables or anything and later on when you filter and summarize and all that stuff you would see that you know it has 
got the final summary day, right? So the final summary is delay and total number of these observations are. So that's what he's talking about. And uh, the other thing that you can also do is uh, for this kind of thing, you know, like uh, he's not, he did not mention it there, but I can do uh, create uh, what you call a new frame that everybody does that something like this. And then, you know, we can have the flights data set instead of, I mean, I usually do it myself, you know, like I use the, the original data set like that. I just leave it, I, I really don't tamper with that. Then, you know, I just recreate uh, uh, another uh, data, uh, data, uh, data frame or data, uh, this thing and use, and once everything is done, I just put it into that object. So I have the flights object and also the flight sum object, you know, the summary object, which, we are trying to do it. So this way, uh, the whatever he said, you know, the repetition of all that stuff. Yes, that's exactly the final data set. Uh, the final data is in a different object, and the original object is not tampered. So he has that, but um, it's it's uh, you know uh, it comes back again to your, st your your own style of programming or you know uh, uh, or. Uh, uh, there are certain rules in industry where you uh, they need to see the intermediate data sets and you know sometimes the original data set cannot be written on top of it or in those kinds of uh, industry regulations too which i really don't want to go into that place but that's exactly the way it is but he's talking about that where uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you, you the pipe makes you to write on the original data, I mean, the original object, the R object that you started with. So that's what exactly he's thinking. I mean, that's uh, that's what I understood from this uh, uh, this slide where he was talking about that. And um, well, uh, this is little bit of um, when uh, he makes a good analogy of uh, uh, the pipes when used in functions and um, to be honest with you, uh, this is a little bit, at least for me, it is a little bit of an advanced R concept where uh, <coughs> the, when the piping is used within the functions of uh, the uh, uh, making uh, the functions little dynamic and all that stuff. So uh, I, 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 I am still learning that this concept of uh, uh, the, uh, the current environment and where you know it can be used uh, the 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 pipes within the, those things so i i may not be i mean maybe somebody help, can help me out with this uh, functions that use in the current environment versus the lazy evaluation in the book uh, they have mentioned about how it is done in a different way, but uh, I, I I did not really uh, put into use because it, uh, the way that you know it's still uh, it's it's uh, something a concept I'm still learning is tidy eval where it uh, it it uses it, it it looks at the data uh, in a, in a in a dynamic fashion. It is not like you know one at a time. It, it goes through the whole thing. And evaluates and get it done. So that's what, at least, you know, where uh, this concept of piping is little different than this. But for the people who are just starting, or you know, for the people who are doing it, uh, this may not be able to change or be of any great help. Or you know, understanding you know, once you start working on it, that's what at least at I am uh, when I've started working on this book. So when not to use the pipe, I, I uh, your pipes are longer than certain steps. Or you have multiple inputs or outputs. Or uh, you're starting to think about a directed graph with a complex dependency structure. Uh, nice points with the where uh, you know like my uh, my personal you know. Uh, experience my personal experience uh, with the pipes is uh, you know when not to use it is uh, if you want to uh, if, like say when i was talking about it when you want to see 
how uh, how that uh, the previous procedure is working you know how the procedure you, know, you, you want to see the intermediate data steps or the intermediate data uh, i would highly recommend to have not to use pipes but a single uh, structure of you know try uh, try analyzing how that is like say do you have because i am coming from an entirely a different uh, language background you know i use essays for my day job so where i we usually look at how the data comes in you know before we can think through the next step so for kind of that kind of a person with that kind of an attitude, uh, language background you know we would prefer to do in a single lines look at how the data frame is uh, coming out and then try to uh, try to get it done uh, use it to the next step so uh, we, uh, I, I, I have that habit of doing it. So I, I prefer to use little, I mean, small pipes, not entirely carry, put it everything in one step and then try to see what it is. And as you said, if it is more than 10 pipes, you might, uh, for, I mean, you might lose the, uh, the, the workflow, you know, like what he's started with and then what is you handing it. So that kind of uh, workflow could be lost, or you know, like my professor used to say, uh, very nice thing, you know, if that if uh, the, your code is longer than your uh, viewing the uh, viewing uh, viewing panel, just try to break it down into multiple pieces. That would be give you the readability. So that's that's what my philosophy is, right? If it is like five steps, okay, let's do it, and then come back and try to do that. So that's what uh, you know, like. He is also talking about, I mean, like, that's what I think, you know, that's what you better do it. And multiple inputs and outputs. And yes, uh, uh, if, uh, if you are trying to read one date, I'm trying to uh, merge it with other date. I'm mean, like, do you're doing too many calculations within one pipe go. I would rather suggest, uh, suggest you to break it down into pieces where you can read uh, two or more data data frames and our tables uh, individually, then bring it down and then do a nice step-by-step uh, uh, -step process instead of doing that. And also uh, sometimes some, I, I totally blanked out right now when I'm presenting, but there are sometimes some functions work uh, in a different, uh, some deployer works, some deployer works work uh, you know a uh, little bit differently uh, you know well they're using it in a, in a way I, I cannot maybe I'm I, I I'm not that uh, enough experience uh, about those kind of things but um, I had a trouble in uh, having that flow you know like sometimes when you say select and all that stuff and then use the filter the filter you know some did not respond well so that's kind of a thing you know like maybe once you start uh, trying to do more and more of those deployer webs uh, the pipes you know like getting the understanding of the pipe would be little different i mean they should most of the time it works properly but uh, when there are dates or something you know like i i i, I don't really remember where exactly i had that issue where uh, the case uh, the case when you know those kinds of uh, uh, if and else kind of statements, you know, like when I was trying to do something similar to that, if else statements or else if statements kind of logic, uh, Deploy did not, or the pipes did not go well with that. So I had to do, I had to bring it out and do that. So that's that's uh, that's the thing that I uh, I remember that you know uh, something did not go well with Deploy. At least that was. Uh, six months ago i believe i mean i i totally forgot but no that's 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 where you know like the pipes doesn't really do. and you are starting to think about a graph a directed graph with the complex dependency structure and as we all know that ggplot has a different little bit of syntax but i uh, i really don't don't understand what he's think what he's saying about the uh, think of directed graphs with a complex de dependency structure. Dependency structure, but uh, uh, if uh, I, I I I cannot get. I mean, I really do not understand about this last line. But uh, well, when if you uh, for me at least when I'm using uh, deploy uh, using the pipes and everything at, at at the first few lines, 
get my data out and try to use the ggplot syntax uh, in the next five lines because of the, you know, we cannot use pipes within the ggplot. I have to use either uh, addition symbol, you know, the plus sign. So this kind of, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I keep forgetting about uh, where to use what and little bit, you know, the ggplot does not accept the pipe. So those kind of small things, you know, coding things that you have to keep in mind when you are trying to have uh, differences in that. So those, uh, those things that, that do matter. And uh, before we begin, he started with saying that, you know, the left-hand side and the right-hand side uh, and uh, T-pipe, uh, as he mentioned, and as, uh, as everybody is saying about, I did not use a T -pi uh, the T-pipe. Uh, did any, any of you ever have a chance to, to use the T-pipe? Anyone? Because I, not use the I did not, I mean, I, to be honest with you, uh, when I started working for this presentation, I heard about it for the first time. So I really did not use this uh, T pipes. Uh, so I, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't even see what kind of uh, 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 examples to, I did not have a chance to look into it, but uh, he, he was, he, he did talk about using it with the plots and uh, you know, this thing, but uh, I, 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 I tried to replicate it, but I did not have any, what, you know, what, what is the difference? You know, he's talking about uh, the T-pipe, you know, it brings in the intermediate data set out and put it out in the, uh, uh, here, you know, put it out here in the, so I, I really don't know what could be the, I mean, I, I, because I did not use it much, I cannot think about what could be the user case or user, uh, user would use it for. So I, I really do not know about it. I'm sorry about it. And the last one, he was talking about the dollar sign. It's just a convenience of writing it down. So mostly other than the regular pipe, I did not use any of those other pipes, you know, the pipe structures that are available within the package. Uh, so that's uh, being said, uh, you know, the latest thing that I, I, I found with the pipes is even though the slides are little, uh, little um, not complete, uh, not complete with this one. So I do not know why I, the book, the latest book that we have has uh, more information on pipes than which is on the slides. Like say, uh, let me open it up here in the web browser. Okay, now I just wanted to point you out uh, with the new 4.0 version of it, uh, where uh, there's like, okay, to show you what I'm talking about, hopefully. This is the one. I'm just trying to open two things here. Okay, so I'm just having to uh, just an R code. Okay, and uh, we say, for example, we have, I, I'm going to re uh, reuse the same thing. I uh, Let me copy, I mean, in the interest of time, I'm just copying that code that we have already here. And of course, I'm a little, uh, not lazier, but I'm not a good, uh, this thing I type very well. So if you, if you see that, okay, we have traditionally used this pipe here and to do the summary statistics or whatever it is, okay, so this, would uh, give us a summary of uh, this thing, okay? This is a summary of how many cylinders we have and the total count. And with, uh, with the 4.0, we have a very similar, okay, uh, I, I cl uh, clicked on that. Um, 
Where could I find this one here? Okay, hopefully this is 4.02, which I'm working. Okay, now you see, this is the same thing, you know, like we, uh, if, you, if you see that, we have three uh, three rows, four, six, uh, four, six, eight, 11, seven, four. And if we use uh, uh, this pipe, you know, the, that new pipe that with the, uh, with the 4.0, I think it's 4.0 up, we have this new pipe, which does exact, not, I, got, I mean, I'm saying that almost the same, almost the same, support of same similar i mean the same functionality of the original pipe and uh, this now there is a couple of people who have, i mean i heard a lot of uh, youtube videos and on the differences between the this pipe using of this pipe versus this pipe this uh, uh, because this pipe is little it's basically uh, is built within the base r you do not have to call an extra package uh, uh, with extra package. So this seems to be a little faster. I mean, not seems to be, this, uh, this is a little faster than this pipe. <coughs> Saying that, uh, uh, so the way that we, uh, the control shift M, you know, uh, to change that the control shift M, uh, here is the you know the way we do is I just had a snapshot where you go to the code you know the general options code where you have to select this one we say use a native pipe operator one oh sorry it's instead of 4.0 it is 4.1 plus so if we have the newest version of R and if you check this one when you when 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 you type in the at least on windows when you when you type on con, uh, control shift m you would have this one as a pipe instead of having uh, the pipe greater than or greater than uh, this thing so instead of having this pipe you'll be you will be printing it out this pipe so that's the first difference uh, or the the latest difference or the the thing that uh, you want to uh, uh, the 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 book has started mentioning about it and then the other thing that uh, they were talking about is uh, the new, I mean, which is not here in the uh, slides. I uh, hopefully, I don't know, like maybe we are, I think, can I update the slides too uh, for this new things that here they are talking about? Yes, you can update and push it back uh, to GitHub. Okay, so I'll do that. I may, whenever I get a chance today and all that stuff, I'll, I'll try to push it out. And uh, here is something, uh, <coughs> these are the three very valid points, uh, maybe in the book. He says that uh, the, the new pipe does not have entirety of all the functions which are with the Dipler pipe, tidyverse pipe, okay? So he keeps on, uh, he, he mentions that for the simple case, uh, identical say it says that you know for the simple cases they're exactly the same there's not much difference but uh, it has taken advantage of some uh, uh, the the old uh, tipler pipe you know, the tipler uh, style of pipe has advantages and you know, tidy uh, tidy eval you know i try to do that in the tidy eval which is the advanced topic of uh, using the where I'm trying to use the uh, the new style of pipe, it did not understand, or it did not understand, or maybe I did not do it right. So that the tidy eval functions did not take it the new style of pipe really well. So if at all you're if you're if you're planning to change everything uh, to the new style of pipe, just hold on. Uh, I think, you know, they're just trying to really uh, work on through it or fix most of the issues with that. Or I, we, I really don't know because uh, R is still, uh, it's still working on its own uh, standardization and that stuff. I still, you know, they keep on adding new stuff. And also he, he says that, uh, you know, the new, uh, the new, uh, the new, uh, the pipe has introduced underscore concept 
uh, where it is equivalent to uh, it was initially equivalent to f uh, uh, the f of function you know where uh, it, the the right hand side and left hand side the the function uh, the function uh, if if we do not mention anything uh, say if, uh, hopefully say uh, okay here if you do not say anything here x pipe the f of one meaning that it is nothing but f x of one you know the 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 from whatever the value that we are trying to uh, do it from left hand side it is going to flow towards the right hand side it's always flows but if you uh, if you do f one of dot dot is like a kind of a placeholder in r uh, where you want to bring in some other new guess so what happens is that that the guest would follow up the next one so it is like f one of x and uh, the the new placeholder had got a new uh, uh kind of uh, added variable it is underscore instead of dot we can have an underscore uh, no, not instead they, you can have that where you can have y is equal to x okay so this is little bit i i really don't use it right now but you know just want to make uh you know understand that you can do it and there's something interesting that you can do um i wanted to show one last example before I can say that it's a very short chapter, so we can uh, go ahead and uh, do it. Um, where is the first example? Where are we? The very first example, okay. I'm going to rewrite this one. Hopefully I have it here down. That's been okay now okay I can use the same example here uh, okay so I'm just typing in here uh, okay so this is the flight sum uh, example that we already know that we worked on uh, the flight sum is so the piping this is the new piping that we have used so say for example if if accidentally you think of uh, saying that you know you just said this one here and uh, you know you did have this pipe and this pipe and the different style of pipe still it does not matter uh, and it you can use uh, same i mean two different styles of piping within the same uh, this thing it does not i mean it does not complain so you can still use both of them if you are on the latest version okay i mean i i, I mean i had that this one if it is less than the 4.1 because it does not read this pipe it is going to complain but if it is greater version than that it does not really complain uh, for the pipes you, know, you can have one style of pipe here the other style of pipe here and keep on going it so any questions till now almost we are almost at the end of the slides and also this thing so any any questions anyone hello Okay, uh, uh, so are we, uh, so once we had, how is going to be the next thing, you know, basically we will done or we can, hello? Hello, I can hear you. Yes, oh, you can't hear me? I can't hear you, I can't hear you, you're audible. Okay, no, I'm just saying that we are done uh, with the slides and, you know, this is what the, the basic pipes and all that stuff is. So uh, if you have no questions or any, anyone have any comments on what you think about the pipes or do you have any other information to share? Uh, in absence of no question, I want to really thank you. I think your presentation was very clear. Oh, you okay, really showed you. us uh, a lot of example. And I think uh, the next week we'll be looking at uh, chapter six which is a very important chapter also because what we learn in this chapter is to apply it into see how 
we can uh, tidy our data at and that will be taken by Betsy Moriti. I think it's, she's the one uh, to take chapter six. So if there is no questions, I think we'll end for today. Then we meet next week, the same Bye. time. Thank you all. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.